Today we're going to check out the E-Element Z77 Gaming Mechanical Keyboard. This is another keyboard that many of us have seen on MassDrop and now more and more Chinese sellers are selling this. So first up is the box which is very plain and compact which I don't mind. I'm unsure on what the 77 means in the model name but it does say 87 on there as well which is the number of keys it has. And opening it up, we have the keyboard itself and then a small guide for the board. The board is also protected by bubble wrap and then a foam sleeve, so it's decent enough, but it's not the best. And as we can see, it's a 10 keyless keyboard with said 87 keys, so what's missing is the numpad on the side, and it just makes it more compact and brings your mouse closer to the center of your desk. And first impressions is that it looks quite similar to a Corsair keyboard. This is because it has no plastic top shell like seen on most other mechanical keyboards. So the top surface is just the metal backplate that the key switch is then mounted to. The surface is metal and is steel rather than aluminium that's featured on the Corsair boards. We can tell this since the surface is magnetic which means it's a ferrous metal which aluminium is not. Also aluminium surfaces tend to be anodized or brushed and this surface is covered in a black powder coat. As for the black coating, I'm unsure on its durability because as we can see here, unfortunately there is a chip and this is how it was straight out of the packaging so I'm not too sure what happened there. Fortunately one thing that this keyboard didn't follow Corsair on was the terrible non-standard layout that Corsair used. The bottom row on this Z77 is completely standard so getting some aftermarket keycaps for these will be no problem. And that brings us to the keycaps themselves, and I've never really been a fan of the font or typeface that they use on these cheap keyboards. And at the top there's a metal label or branding, much, much alike to the Corsair boards. Since there's no plastic top shell, the key switches are exposed, which have a few advantages, like how it's easier to clean the keyboard, and that the lighting will be dispersed a bit more. So let's plug it in and see how it looks lit up. Now this is another unfortunate trend with these keyboards where they kind of attempt to somewhat fake an RGB keyboard by giving different colours to different rows which emulates an RGB keyboard. But it really isn't since you can't change the colours or layout of the lights, so really I would so much more prefer just white LEDs to make it look cleaner because it kind of does give a, off a cheap look, but then again your taste may vary. There's also a bunch of lighting modes, which is controlled by the function key at the bottom and the insert key. It essentially has the same controller that's seen on other keyboards of, the, of this kind, like the Moto Speed K87. As I've said many times, it's cool to have these other modes when people are around, but I always just prefer having a straight solid backlight. The disassembly is super simple, it's just removing a couple of keycaps and then removing those Phillip head screws. One thing to note is that there is a screw under the metal label which I had to use a heat gun on to loosen the adhesive and after that it comes apart really easily. Normally a mechanical keyboard comes apart in three parts but since there's no plastic top shell we just have two. The bottom shell is a standard ABS plastic shell with a ton of screw bosses there but there is an absence of ribbing along the bottom of the plastic surface which does create a bit more flex and less rigidity. The metal backplate which is connected to the PCB and the key switches is oversized since it's being used as the top surface as well and we can see how thin the metal sheet is and how it's constructed. The PCB itself looks pretty normal with typical soldering but since there are LEDs with the addition of various lighting modes there's quite a lot more going on there in comparison to other keyboards. And that brings us to the key switches themselves which is one of the more interesting points about the board. These use Altamu key switches and this one in particular are the blue ones. I've covered these switches before but essentially these are Chinese clones of the famous German made Cherry MX mechanical key switches. So generally these will give you the same experience and feel of the Cherry MX blue switch but this Altamu blue switch are a bit more stiffer and more clacky. So basically they're the same but generally seem to be of a lower quality and have looser tolerances. These also have a clear casing which helps disperse the lighting a bit more along that metal surface. Having a closer look into the switch, these use a different LED setup to the more traditional keyboards. So again it kind of disperses the light to illuminate the whole key switch which has a nice effect. 
The keycaps are ABS plastic, but what's good to see about these is that they're double shot. So there's two pieces of plastic combined together to create the characters, which is so much better than what's seen on so many other backlit keyboards, which just have black coatings that are etched. So overall, it's another budget mechanical keyboard in the massive wave of cheap Chinese boards that have come with the ability to create clones of the Cherry MX key switches. And it delivers that undeniable mechanical experience and chucks on a few lighting features, however, in not the most flattering manner. It also has a solid metal construction that I know many will like. I'm sure there's very similar boards that have just white backlighting instead, so I'd probably just go for one of those, but that's just me. Oh, and uh, as for the little chip that was in the coating, I just coloured it in with a marker and it looks pretty good. I've done quite a few budget keyboards recently, so I'll go more into some enthusiast grade stuff uh, coming soon, so stay tuned for that.